Hey, I have the pleasure of introducing you to a great panel of your colleagues, people that are on their own IaaS journey today in infrastructure as a service, really to share with you some insights that'll help you take advantage of this tremendous market opportunity. So to my left, Sam with Ready Networks. In the middle, we have Craig with Blue Silver Shift. And to the far end, Herb with PCM. Thank you, gentlemen, for joining us today. So before we get started, I thought I'd take a moment and just kind of set the table, right? We've heard an awful lot this week about the opportunity with infrastructure as a service, but consider for a second how big this opportunity truly is. IDC is predicting that by 2023, public infrastructure will eclipse hardware infrastructure. Consider for a second what a massive opportunity that is. Consider for a second where your firms need to be to fully take advantage of that incredible need that your clients are bringing to you today. So without further ado, let's jump into the conversation. Craig, I'm going to start with you. So there's several folks here that are just getting started in this journey, and they're really beginning to think about where do they get started? What are the first things that you thought about as you were kind of kicking off your efforts in this space? Sure. Um, well, I think in terms of advice for anybody who is getting started in this space, um, it's really around be ready for the pace of change. The traditional method of doing this business in uh, hosting and so on is, you know, every three to five years, there's a large upgrade hardware or monolithic application release. In cloud, that pace is like every week there's something new and you know it's ongoing. And so just be prepared for that pace of change, I think. Yep. Hey Herb, you guys I know are growing your business rapidly, right? A lot of new skills, not a lot of new competencies really to help meet those needs of your clients. What are you guys thinking about as you're expanding? I think it's a couple things. First off is having a plan of what we want to focus on and be good at. Yep. There's so much change. The spectrum is so large. You, you can't possibly do everything. So for us, we try to pick our spots. Secondly, we try to have a clear program of how we're going to develop talent in those particular areas because there's no significant amount of talent in any one of these verticals today. And then lastly, who we're going to partner with. We know we need partners in key areas to complement what we're doing to provide a holistic solution to those customers. Sure. So that's kind of how we set up our framework as we've been going forward. Yep, Sam, it seems like you have something to add. So, uh, yeah, so we took a very agile approach on IaaS, and uh, as, as a former MSP, we needed to identify how to move workloads first from that perspective and then adopt going forward. Yeah. So, so the need came from the standard of trying to solve a problem for our customers who were already interested in cloud. Yeah, listening to customers, that seems to be something that's resonated, I know, through a lot of my conversations here this week. So um, as you're evaluating those solutions, really to all of you, what are the top workloads that you're seeing today that your clients are asking for help with? For us, we see most, most predominant databases, whether that be Oracle or SQL or net new transition from legacy platforms to, that seems to be the number one workload that we're seeing. Yep. Craig? Um, yeah, a lot of, actually we're doing a lot of work in microservices as well, so breaking down an application from on-prem and developing it separately in, in microservices, so taking it even a level further above IaaS and going to PaaS. Yeah. You know, um, and before I get to you, Sam, so uh, Craig's firm is pretty anchored on Microsoft Azure and clearly an explosive opportunity there. Sam's firm has been pretty anchored on AWS. Give kind of your perspective on, are there workload differences that your firms are seeing? Do you want to go first? Sure, yeah. The, uh, the workloads are, are the same at the end of the day. It's the framework design that's important. Mm -hmm. So as you're identifying what that framework looks like and trying to explain cloud to your customer, um, you have to go through several steps. It's a, it's a nurturing process. It doesn't, sure. it doesn't happen overnight. And uh, the most impactful strategy we've had for IaaS, which is, having a conversation around disaster recovery. That seems to be the entry point and the least intrusive in terms of shifting that location from prem to cloud. Actually, that's a good point in terms of workloads too. It's, that's an easy win right out of the gate is DR um, for sure. So 
I guess I don't have anything further to add to what you just said, but in terms of between differences between Azure and, and AWS, um, I would say it comes down to the automation capabilities uh, between the two, uh, and, and we've the, the reason we made an investment in focusing on Azure is sure. really because we were initially diversified. We said we'll do both. We'll do AWS or Azure to our customers. We kind of got pulled in the direction of Azure and decided to specialize on that. And the main reason being, you know, tooling, skill sets, training for our staff. So we just said, you know what, let's invest all of our eggs in this one basket, and it's been the right decision for us. Yep, yep. Herb, before I come to you, you know, training keeps coming up an awful lot. We talked a little bit about, you know, what kind of resources, what kind of skills, and certainly workload is going to drive a lot of that need for education. Herb, your business is really in both of those camps. What are you seeing? I think it goes back again to having that plan. As we start evolving and, and our scale as, you know, as being a global partner, the biggest challenge we run into is either buying a talent or building the talent. And yeah. with the rate of change that we're experiencing in the industry today, build is good, but it right. takes 18 to 24 months to even be near relevant, and buy is extremely expensive. So what we've done is a mixture of the two, to yep. try to meld those together with training our legacy talent, even though some of those talents or skills don't always translate to the new world. Yeah, great point. Great point. It looked like you had a comment. Just a thought. Um, so it, it's super important as you think about professional development and building your bench, you have to understand your customers. Yep. And identifying the workloads need to, needs to be defined by the vertical and the customer style that you're in. Otherwise, you're, you're going to, you know, it's a, it's a va vast opportunity to train a lot in all yeah. places of cloud. So you need to be hyper-focused on that piece. Yeah, quickly can become overwhelming. That's so great. I think it's really interesting that both of you commented, and, and we didn't have this conversation before, about the opportunity with disaster recovery. So sounds like a great place to start. Let's kind of carry that journey forward. And so what are some of the other solution areas that you're seeing are becoming more top of mind for some of the customers you've been working with for a while? We see a lot around BI which is more awareness and presentation of data and leveraging some of the constructs that exist today in either platforms. Um, the other we're starting to see a lot more demand is IoT, but not in the pure sense of IoT, more in the product development space. So when you deploy or you leverage that with your existing infrastructure, how do I make that relevant to my business other than just gathering metrics and information? And that we see a, a huge demand that's still developing. Yeah, great. We've certainly heard a lot about IoT here this week. So, exciting area for growth. Any other solutions come to mind for you other guys? Uh, no, I would echo that. IoT, we've been doing a bunch of work in that. And again, similar to what Herb said, it's on the development side as opposed yep. to the infrastructure side. So, our, our discipline is kind of what happens after IaaS. Yeah. Once you get to IaaS, what do you have to do to continue the journey and, yeah. and move forward? So. As you think about workloads being consolidated, um, the opportunity to present data becomes more available. And so as a partner moving into cloud, you really have to think about what that journey looks like past IaaS. Yep. Um, presenting data, making it more simplified. Yeah. And so uh, you know, think of a workflow. For everyone looking to build a practice, think about what that five-year strategy is going to be around IaaS and beyond. Yeah, I would actually like to pick up on that too, because our strategy is IaaS is just an entry point. It's the starting point for getting your customer there. It's an easy shift from doing on-prem or colo uh, management of your, your systems. But the real benefits of the cloud come from the PaaS side of things. So being able to elevate beyond that and what Renee said in her keynote yesterday around the uh, cloud awesomeness roadmap, right? So you start with build with one to three CERT cloud offerings. Moving beyond that to, to scale on the fourth side, um, you really need to elevate and, and leverage PaaS and, and even SaaS offerings to, to get to that point. And there's a lot of cross-selling opportunities in there too. So if you just look at your customers as IaaS only and you do your lift and shift, get it in there, and then just manage it after that, you're leaving a lot of money on the table. Yeah, so let's double click on that. I think that's a great point. I know from many of the conversations I've had this week, there's a lot of partners really looking at doubling down in this space. And probably the number one question I get is, 
how do I make money? Or maybe said a different way, what are the other things over and above reselling infrastructure as a service that I need to be focused on to maximize my return and profitability? Sure, I'll take that. Um, I think it, it, leveraging the PaaS comment I was just saying, investing in um, beyond just infrastructure skills on your team, yeah. having some development expertise, being able to build those tools for your customers that they are demanding, whether it be improving workflow or just understanding how the business operates. And it actually changes the conversation with your customers too from dealing with the IT technical folks, now you need to start thinking about dealing with the business folks as well because they're the ones who understand what the challenges are, what the bottlenecks are in their business, and you can help to leverage cloud technologies to actually elevate them, and, and IT may not understand those uh, bottlenecks. Yeah, great point. And, and I would add, you know, our philosophy is assess where they are today both from an architecture perspective as well as a financial perspective to identify the right place to go. A system with that migration, which is going to be a journey, not an instantaneous transition. And then ideally help them manage those environments ongoing. And all of those three areas, you can have tertiary revenue opportunities to bolt on as you're selling the destination. And then once you get them to the destination, ideally, you're continuing to enrich that experience and making sure they're getting more value for their spend. Yeah, great point, great point. So let's shift gears too. I know as many partners uh, are advancing the work that they've already done in infrastructure as a service, they're thinking about where do they go next. You guys have been at this for a while. What kind of insights or best practices could you offer? Wow, that's a good question. I, I think the area is still developing, and some of the best practices are how do you tweak and meld some of the legacy ITIL, DevOps, all those things that yep. we have as technical standards today. They're continuing to change yeah. because, again, that destination is evolving. So you need to be dynamic and flexible also with the customers because they're not familiar with many of these new tenants and how they exist. So I think that's the biggest thing I could share is back to I think the earlier point, how do you educate the customer to manage in, in an ITIL DevOps type world or framework with cloud? That's so different to them that they struggle to how do they manage their ongoing business, deploy code, modernize applications, keep yeah. the windows and lights on while they're moving forward. I think yeah, I really like what you touched on there and that's been one of my observations. You know, we kicked off the discussion talking about the market opportunity. What we didn't really drill into though is the level of need that most customers are really looking for help, right? They're not necessarily, or my opinion would be that the end client IT organizations don't have all the resources that they need to handle all this in house. So the opportunity for partners to really do more to help them, I think has never been bigger. I just wanted to add one thing, the, the continuation of that strategy is based on knowing your customer, by the way. Yeah. And so the dynamics of cloud give you a lot of options for that customer. So investing in your client, understanding their perspectives that they that drives their revenue is super important to create the solution itself, irrelevant of the platform of choice. Yeah, great point, great point. Craig, anything to add? Um, yeah, I was just going to add on to what Herb was saying. Uh, it's really, I think there's still an immaturity in the tools space with, in terms of uh, for our partners like ourselves managing cloud systems for our, our customers. So sometimes you almost have to take a risk and develop your own tools um, and automation processes and so on. So investing in that, I think, is also important because important, then it, it also can elevate you against your competition. It can become a differentiator as well. Yeah, great point. So um, I'm thinking back to some of the keynote messages yesterday and solution areas that are becoming a much bigger part of the conversation, like AI, machine learning, blockchain. What are you guys seeing from that vantage point? I mean, is that on your mind? Are you thinking about capabilities that are needed in that space? Yeah, you know, it's not something we had thought about um, consciously, but our customers actually are pulling in that direction because I think there's so much in the media about machine learning, AI, but nobody really knows what it means. Sure. Um, we've had some customers come to us and say, well, we've got these large data sets and you know, we're adding to it all the time. How do we get some intelligence out of this? How do we get some predictive analytics? 
And so we're having to kind of learn along with the customers and do some POCs and so on, uh, just to explore what that means. And I think as our business grows, that's another area that's going to uh, be a you know, practice area for us in the, in the AI and ML side. Sam, anything to add? Yeah, we, uh, yeah. <laughs> um, so understanding AI is very complex because, again, it links back to the customer, right? Yeah. We today have a chatbot platform that we've developed internally uh, that uses AI and natural language processing to help our customers make decisions. And so we're a little bit more advanced on the AI piece, but the, the key is to understanding how to build AI, which yeah. links back to the tool sets. So as you think about your journey to cloud, understanding AI, you've heard AI a lot today on this stage, truly understand the toolkits that are used today in the cloud platforms to develop those AI solutions. Excellent, excellent. Well, um, maybe before we tie up, let me try and land the plane a little bit here. So uh, it occurs to me uh, that all three of your firms have leveraged some of the capability and help that's available from Ingram Micro Cloud today. I think most of your firms are familiar with our proven nine-step methodology to really enable the development of an IaaS practice. When I think about that, coupled with many of the things that you've heard about here today, I mean, consider for a second the power in the infinite solutions that are powered by the cloud providers that we have the privilege to represent whether it's Microsoft Azure, IBM's cloud, or Amazon Web Services, clearly a fantastic lineup. And then you back that up with the exciting announcement you heard about this morning, the software IP that makes up that Cloud Blue platform, you got a value prop that you can't lose with. So we look forward to working with you to help you wherever you are in your awesomeness IaaS journey whether it's just getting started or really looking for where that next opportunity is to amplify your value to your clients. Let me close with thanking my panelists. Herb, thank you. Craig, Sam, guys, great insight. Thanks for joining us today. Our pleasure. And thanks for being a partner more than anything. Thank you. Thank you all.